Good afternoon. We'll begin our celebration by singing Emmanuel number 57, and we'll start with verse 3. Thank you. Please rise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the grace and peace of God, our Father, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. As we gather today, we hear of a historical situation that Micah, the prophet, is prophesying. And it's, about, it's in the context of a war. So the Assyrians were attacking Jerusalem. The prophet Micah was preaching words of hope to God's people during the battle. And he speaks of a king who is going to come. And of course, David has been born of Bethlehem. And the king to come would come in Bethlehem. Our gospel is from the Gospel of Luke. In it, we are told about Mary going to visit her cousin Elizabeth to share her good news and to help her. What is presented is the conversation between Mary and Elizabeth. Our second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. The reading is just plain difficult to understand. And this passage consists of a contrast between the Jewish animal sacrifice ritual and the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. So as we gather, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem, Erufatha, you small to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, 
one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they shall remain for, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings holocaust and sin offerings you neither desired nor delighted in these are offered according to the law then he says behold i come to do your will he takes away the first to establish the second by this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Earlier this week, Ann and I received a Christmas card that the sender wrote, that which is a treasure needs to be shared. I thought long and hard on the one-line sentence, and while I could not recall any biblical verse that approached the meaning of the sentence, I immediately connected it to today's gospel from Luke and the important role that Mary played in being the mother of God. In today's gospel, only told in Luke, we hear the story of Mary setting out on a journey to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is pregnant despite her advanced age. Mary, too, is pregnant with Jesus. Her visit and trip to the hill country to a town of Judah comes after the stories of the angel Gabriel's announcement to Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth, concerning the birth of John the Baptist, and Gabriel's announcement to Mary concerning her conception and birth of Jesus. Mary, while probably a bit confused, said yes to the angel and willingly accepted her role as the handmaid Of the Lord. Think of the sacrifice that Mary made in agreeing to participate in God's gracious plan to bring salvation to the world. What a treasure to behold! What a gift to share! And let's not forget about Elizabeth and Zechariah. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit as well, and her infant would be a very integral part of Jesus' message and mission. For he would be the forerunner of Jesus and many times was confused by others as being Christ himself. We heard John the Baptist tell the people in last Sunday's gospel that one mightier than I is coming. Visiting relatives and being a gracious host or guest is something that we continue to do 2,000 years after Mary and Elizabeth's visit before their babies were born. But not all visits result in sharing a treasure that is a wonder to behold. I remember back in the 80s, driving out to Colorado with my mom and dad so we could visit my dad's Aunt Helen. Helen was an armchair traveler since her ability to get around was limited by age and health. She was an expert on national parks, treasured sites, and points of interest. After spending several days visiting with Helen, we set out south on Interstate 25 from Denver. According to Aunt Helen, we had to visit the peak of Pikes Peak, located in nearby Colorado Springs. The view from the peak is a treasure in itself, as on a clear day, you can see five states. 
While Aunt Helen was quite persistent, my folks and I decided to forfeit the peak to allow for more time to travel and sightsee other attractions. We saw Pike's Peak from the interstate and we were satisfied with that. What we didn't count on was that when we told Aunt Helen several weeks later that we truly enjoyed the view from the peak and told her what else we all had done and seen and how far we traveled that day, she could easily calculate that we could not have done all those things if indeed we had traveled to the peak. You see, the trip to the peak itself would have taken near six hours round trip. We were caught in our own travel math of impossibility. We could not outsmart a native Coloradan, especially in her own backyard. The treasure of the state's prominent summit would evade us this trip. I guess we needed some prayerful patience back then to absorb the beauty God created and provided for us to enjoy. Today's first reading from the book from the prophet Micah had early Christians see it as a prophecy about the birth of Jesus. Salvation will come through a Messiah, an anointed ruler. The book of Micah shares with Isaiah the expectation that God will deliver Israel through a king in the line of David. As ruler, he would come from Bethlehem, the home of the Davidic line, and he will be a shepherd of the people. And his greatness would reach to the ends of the earth. Indeed, a treasure to be shared. We all have treasures to share. God has graced all of us with gifts and special talents, and it is our duty to discover what the treasure is and be willing to share it with others. Maybe you have a gifted voice that needs to be heard in one of our choirs. Or maybe you love working with children and teaching them about scripture and our faith. Become a religious education instructor. Maybe you have the gift of gab and love visiting people. Inquire with Deb Wagner Hohensi about becoming a care provider for the lonely, the elderly, or those confined to their home. The point is that God has gifted treasures upon all of us that are waiting to be shared, and he wants us to put them to good use. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, let the fruits of the Spirit guide us to share our talents. Let me end today with a quote from Pope Francis as he spoke with disabled youth in February of 2015. Discover your treasure. Share it with others. All of you have a chest, a box, and inside there is a treasure. Your job is to open the chest, discover the treasure, develop it, give it to others, and receive from others the treasures they offer. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Lord Jesus, come now to hear our intercessions as we express our needs to you. For all God's people, that our longing for Christ be fulfilled this Christmas, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local and national civic leaders, that God bless and guide them as they make de decisions that affect their citizens, especially the poor and the elderly, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, particularly the members of this assembly, that we may proclaim the good news by work and example and share our talents and treasures with those around us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those of our parish community who are far from home or from loved ones this Christmas season feel the loving embrace from this family of faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this final week of Advent, that this community of faith always reflects the light of Jesus in its prayer and outreach, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Theodore Ted Kipokowski and Ken Murray, whose funerals we celebrated this week, that they may now enjoy eternal life in the beauty of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for Donald Pennington and for jo Joanne Sislovich, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions from our prayer chain, written in our book of intentions, and for all of the special requests that we hold in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, you have come into the world to fulfill your love for us and extending to us the gift of heaven. Allow us to form our lives in your ways as we do seek your kingdom. We ask our prayer through Christ our Lord. Our presentation song is number 78, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. <coughs> the Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you call again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you 
in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David Ricken, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Yeah. Hey.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 623, The Cry of the Poor, 623.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, after listening to that homily, since you lied to your sweet Aunt Helen, great aunt, I mean, he probably says anything he wants to me. On uh, Monday, January 10th, we are starting a five-week course covering the Beatitudes, which are different topics that you can see uh, on a sign out in the gathering area. If you are interested, please sign up. Um, there is a sheet there that uh, we just need to have a count as to how many are attending. So please take a look at that and hope we can see you then. Uh, please take a look at all of the Mass times for Christmas. Our times are different. We have uh, on Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock. 10 o'clock and midnight, and then uh, Christmas Day we have uh, 10 in the morning. We will not have a 6 p.m. Mass after tomorrow. We will, but um, Christmas Day and uh, January 1st, is it 1st or 2nd? I don't remember. The 1st, we won't have a 6 p.m. on Sunday Mass. So those the next two weekends after tomorrow, we won't have Mass. So please check the bulletin for our times because they will be different for the next few weeks. We did yesterday, finally, get parish calendars in. They're only about a month late, and they are now out in the gathering area. If you would like one, please um, limit it to one per family right now, and we'll see how many we have left. But uh, at this point, please, um, if your family, take one, and hopefully it'll help you in your journey next year to calendar things with us. And I just want to remind you again about the cookies and candy in the gathering or in the fellowship hall. There's tons, so please um, take a look when you're on your way out. May we pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, the other evil spirits, who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. Our song of sending forth is number 42, People Look East, 4-2.